Waiting for an absent Joe Biden, Barack Obama stood in a socially distanced car park to try to reclaim Pennsylvania and to rewrite some history on the Trump presidency, its unscripted attempts to control COVID-19. We literally left this White House a pandemic playbook. We don't know where that playbook went. And the president's handling of the truth. Truthfulness and democracy, these aren't Republican or Democratic principles, they're American principles. Truth is also a prime target for outsiders. Intelligence and law enforcement have blown the whistle on Iranian and Russian cyber actors targeting registered voters with misinformation. <laughs> Some of it threatening reprisals by the anti-left Proud Boys movement against those who don't vote Republican. To intimidate voters, incite social unrest and damage President Trump. Authorities say their defences against foreign interference worked. They acted immediately. These actions are desperate attempts by desperate adversaries. If democracy runs on accepted rules for debating ideas, then this one was tainted long ago. It doesn't take foreign actors to bring questions of legitimacy, vote rigging, money politics and honour into this campaign. President Trump was at it weeks ago and still is. He's preparing for his second and final debate with Joe Biden and thriving on raucous rally crowds in North Carolina. We've got the White House, we're winning, that's it. Whether he'd relinquish that office, quietly, if he lost, is a moot point for at least another 13 days. Greg Jennett, ABC News, Washington. 20 European nations have seen record increases in COVID infections despite tightening restrictions and improved testing. More than half of new cases in the region are from Britain, France, Russia, the Czech Republic and Italy. Romania and Bulgaria have made masks mandatory as infections hit all-time highs, while Spain and France have become the first European countries to exceed a million cases. Well, in the UK, Prime Minister Boris Johnson is forging ahead with regional lockdowns after nearly 200 people died and more than 26,000 new cases were recorded in a day. Now, Thailand's government has lifted the ban on gatherings of five or more people, which it imposed to try to end months of mass protests. The decision came after activists clashed with riot police in Bangkok. Protesters have given Thailand's Prime Minister a three-day deadline to resign or face more demonstrations. Southeast Asia correspondent Mazoe Ford reports. Defiant and determined, the young protesters took on rows of riot police on the streets of Bangkok. The Prime Minister banned large gatherings last week to try to rein in the growing student-led protest movement. It only compelled more ties to join in. The activists have made unprecedented demands for reform of Thailand's monarchy. They also want a new constitution and the military-backed Prime Minister Prayat Chanacha to resign. If he doesn't resign within three days, he will face the people again. This afternoon, the Prime Minister lifted the ban on public gatherings and is recalling Parliament next week to try to de-escalate the situation. While I can listen to and acknowledge the demands of protesters, I cannot run the country based on protester or mob demands. A country that's no stranger to a political challenge, but with calls for monarchy reform as well, there's never been one as bold as this. Mazoe Ford, ABC News. The National Archives has revealed it spent more than a million dollars in legal fees in a bid to prevent the release of the so-called palace letters. Correspondence between the Queen and former Governor-General uh, Sir John Kerr was made public this year following a nine-year legal battle that went all the way to the High Court. The institution's director has been asked to explain how much blocking the application by historian Jenny Hocking cost taxpayers. So We've totaled up all of the legal fees and costs that we have incurred uh, for the, the Hocking case, uh, and it totals uh, one million, a bit over one million dollars. Commonwealth will also have to foot Ms Hocking's legal bills, which could add hundreds of thousands of dollars to the cost. 
Pope Francis has expressed support for same-sex civil unions. Vatican observers say it's the pontiff's strongest remark yet on the issue, but doesn't signal a change to Catholic doctrine. In a new film called Francesco, the Pope said homosexuals have a right to be in a family. What we have to create is a civil union law. That way, they are legally covered. As an archbishop in Argentina, he opposed efforts to legalize same-sex marriage.